It's 10 years this week since the death of a man many consider to be the greatest motor racing driver of all time. Ayrton Senna da Silva died on the 1st of May 1994 after crashing out of the San Marino Grand Prix. It was only his third race for the Williams team. He was 34 years old and had already won three Formula One World Championships with McLaren. Senna's move to Williams reflected his attitude in life, to do what it takes to be the very best. The main thing is to, to innovate and to stimulate yourself with the, with the right challenge. And that's what I've been searching for, that's what I, I believe I found. Senna's funeral was the largest ever seen in Brazil. A nation came to a halt to say farewell to their greatest contemporary hero. Senna's achievements and passion for Brazil made him a national icon whose image far eclipsed the country's soccer stars. Among the mourners at his funeral was his sister, Viviane. People say they admire Ayrton Senna, not just because he was a racer, a talented and successful driver, which is very important, but also because of his character. Ayrton Senna, the person, was much more than just a successful racing driver. When people talk about him, they always mention his human side, which is something independent of the passing of time or the number of races he won. There are other three-time world champions, but they never get the same amount of admiration as him. The Brazilian's modest tomb in Sao Paulo has become a place of pilgrimage for his fans. And it's the starting point for our own tribute to Ed and Senna through the testimony of the people closest to him. Five months before his death, Senna raced in a karting competition in Paris against his biggest Formula One rival, Alain Prost. I had some fantastic times with Ayrton. We had moments of joy and some very tough times together as well. Often when there was a tiny little problem between us, it was exaggerated by people around us, or by the media or whatever. But we learned to live with that. We did have some difficult times. There was one period when we hardly spoke a word to each other. But even then, when we were in the technical briefing, we were like two brothers because we'd still exchange ideas to improve the car and the team. So it was a bit of a strange relationship. Karting for Senna was more than just an end of season runaround. It was where he first began racing seriously, aged 13. Back then, his crew was made up of just one man, his Spanish mechanic Lucio Pascual, known in Brazil as Che. Senna would become Brazilian and South American karting champion and world runner-up in 1980. He learned his trade in karting for seven years before moving on to Formula Ford at the age of 20. But the times with Che were the best driving school he could have asked for. He was just another boy among many others. I've been working in karting for 15 years and I tell you, when a driver listens to his mechanic, he learns a lot. But when he listens to his father, he doesn't get anywhere. That's because fathers demand things they haven't even taught their kids yet. But a good mechanic really educates his driver. I was lucky because I was like a father for Senna, a friend, a counsellor, and he obeyed no one but me. When Senna moved on to Formula One, he took with him a trademark that was to make him instantly recognizable to fans all around the world. The bright yellow helmet was created in Sao Paulo by motor racing designer Sid Mosca. His friendship with Senna dates back to the young driver's karting days. 
que representasse o Brasil teria que levar a driver representing Brazil in the world championship just had to wear the colors of his country the colors of the national flag but I had the idea to use a predominantly yellow design rather than the traditional Brazilian green and yellow. Yellow is a happy color, a sporting color, and it had much more to do with Ayrton's all-round attitude. Senna was marked out by more than his helmet. He was a unique character whose intense Christian faith always raised eyebrows. For some, it helped explain why he drove so fearlessly. For others, it made him a liability. He was certain that God was protecting him, so the other drivers had better watch out. We believed in the same God. Senna followed biblical principles, and so did I. You know, sometimes we would quote lines from the Bible to each other. Whenever things weren't going so well, or he was not feeling right, I would remind him of some passage written in the Bible, like, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But it's not just in the memory of his friends that Senna lives on. In Campinas, Felipe Granzotto and his father have founded the Eton Senna movement. They've established an Eton Senna day and have built a memorial to him in the city where he began his karting career. Granzotto was just seven years old when Senna died. Now 17, the karting racer has made Senna his driving deity. I feel that Senna holds me at the corners. He guides me from wherever he is. He's a permanent source of inspiration for me. Whenever I have problems, I think about him, and I know things are possible. Training is essential in karting, and training hard, I managed to get closer to what he was, always working hard with great perseverance, just like him. Che, Felipe Granzotto and Sid Mosca are just three out of the millions of Brazilians and motor racing fans all over the world who would give anything to see Ayrton back here at Interlagos, racing through the Senna S in the Brazilian Grand Prix once more. Today, I still can't accept that he doesn't exist anymore. I'm not a spiritualist, but sometimes I wonder if I ever will have the opportunity sorry, to see him again. Senna was undoubtedly a brilliant driver and a complex man. His early death brought a superb career to a premature end. But the Brazilian's legacy goes far beyond his short life on the track. In the last 10 years, four million Brazilian children have been supported by the Ayrton Senna Foundation. The organization, run by Viviana Senna, makes the most of her brother's image and name for its funding from luxury goods through children's toys to the Seninha cartoon. Every penny made is donated to charities in Brazil. It's an idea that Senna shared with his sister just two months before his death. Ayrton was never a man for speeches. He was a man of action. When he thought about doing something for Brazil, he never theorized on it. He just went straight into action. It's a shame he didn't live to see this idea become reality. Whenever I talk about it, I say that he was special, as in out of the ordinary. And that's just as much as a person as as a driver. And the way he drove, especially in qualifying, was the stuff of greatness. Ayrton was the seed of change in Brazil. When he raised the Brazilian flag, he was showing us the country we wanted to be, the Ayrton Senna Brazil. He was showing us we could make it. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you.